Throughout the pandemic, there's been a debate about whether uh, uh, COVID-19 is spread by droplets, which would fall out of the air within, say, six feet, or whether it's aerosol, which would be much smaller particles, and they hang in the air for hours, which obviously would create a problem in small, unventilated or poorly ventilated rooms. And that describes school uh, classrooms perfectly. And I think the, the science now has come down on the side of aerosol transmission. So how do we pr uh, protect students uh, in these poorly vented classrooms? Barry Hunt, who's a scientist and inventor in Ontario, has come up with a COVID-19 air purifier unit that anybody can build in their garage or maybe in a high school shop class. So we're going to talk to him about that. Uh, Barry, welcome to the interview. Thanks, Mark. I'm very nice to be with you today. Look, why don't, please describe uh, your, your air purifier unit and how you came up with it. Sure. Um, well, uh, a lot of people have been using Corsi Rosenthal box uh, filters, uh, which is essentially Merc 13 or higher furnace filters that they shape into a box and then use a 20 by 20 uh, box fan on top and a very effective cost and cost effective system to purify a lot of air. And so, uh, you know, and a lot of do-it-yourself projects going on throughout North America right now and, and perhaps around the world to try and um, uh, reduce exposure within classrooms. So uh, if we can increase our air changes within a classroom, you know, to uh, four to six air changes per hour, we can significantly reduce people's exposure to, uh, to COVID in the air. And so uh, what we were looking at doing is trying to find a way to make that even more cost effective uh, than buying furnace filters and having to throw them out uh, you know, every semester, uh, the landfill and the cost, uh, even though it's significantly less expensive than commercial units, uh, could be cheaper yet. So we experimented last year with using standard filter materials in flat sheet form. Um, and uh, we got involved with a company that is making a new nanomaterial uh, for this year that uh, has a very easy breathability, very low pressure drop. So we can use flat sheet material now. And, uh, and we put together some prototypes and we're just reaching out to people now to see if there's interest in doing it. But we can eliminate probably 90 or 95% of the landfill or uh, recycling uh, materials and probably 90% of the cost of filtration or, or more by using just flat filter material. Yeah, I, I've seen pictures of it and we'll put some up uh, here in the video, but I mean, basically it's a box with holes cut out, uh, a, a fan, a bathroom fan on top and this nano material wrapped around it. I, I mean, what it, it's, it's brilliant, brilliant in its simplicity. That's as simple as it gets, but the, the secret really is in the nano material. Without that, the pressure drop is just too high and you have to use multi pleated uh, filters. So when you pleat furnace filters, for example, you get about four times the surface area of the filter in that same size. And so uh, unless you use a very special material that's very breathable, uh, you wouldn't be able to use flat sheet. Is, uh, are these, is this flat sheet nano material readily available across Canada? It's just coming online now. And uh, really it was being invented at the same time as COVID was starting. So uh, we had a startup company being launched from the University of Waterloo uh, called Big Nano, and uh, which we were associated with. And um, we've been working with them to develop the materials specifically for masks and respirators. And now we're looking at repurposing it possibly for uh, uh, filter boxes for classrooms. And uh, I assume that I'm going to uh, uh, put a link uh, to your design in uh, our uh, the YouTube description so everybody can have a look at it. And we're really hoping that teachers will see this video and be able to uh, incorporate these into their into their classrooms. And uh, is it? Uh, and I assume that you have links to where this nanomaterial can be can be purchased. Yeah, so I have a company called Prescient, and we can certainly buy it through uh, that company. And Prescient manufactures um, engineered infection prevention systems, primarily for healthcare prior to COVID, and now, now for um, everything. So uh, happy to give you that link. And uh, what's uh, the, the cost of making one of these? Well, uh, to be determined, I mean, you can easily make your own cardboard box or 
make a frame out of wood or plastic or whatever you would like. But I think the filter material uh, would be about ten dollars uh, per box, and um, or that's certainly what we're hoping. And to try and get four hundred cm out of a, a twenty inch box fan uh, for for ten dollars. And ideally, you would change out that filter once a semester, so maybe twenty dollars for the school year. Uh, but the, that's a very cost effective way of delivering clean air. And uh, have you got any schools uh, that I know this is your design is fairly recent, but have you got any schools, any real world experience with the filter yet? We um, built some prototypes last year. Uh, you know, and so we run them for about nine months now to see how they stand up and they stand up very well. Uh, we don't have them in any schools at this point. The material availability has been very, very limited. Uh, as you can imagine, the demand for the material for masks and respirators um, really needs to be satisfied first. So as it's scaling up, we can make the material available the, for other applications. And this will be uh, the next application, I think, that, that we'll be. Is the, is the material available now? I mean, anybody who watching is, is going to watch this is going to say, well, you know, OK, great design. I For 20 bucks, I'll put together one of these filters, put it in my classroom. Uh, but, you know. Can they get the material if they order it from you? Uh, they can very shortly. We have two very large machines um, coming online right now. The first machine has just been commissioned. The second one will be commissioned in about a week. And, uh, and that should be enough material to supply probably a candidate. Great, well, Barry, thank you very much for this. And uh, kudos to you for making, uh, putting this together. I know on my social media feeds, I see a lot of concern from teachers about this particular issue and they're, they're feeling a little abandoned by you know, provincial governments and, and school boards. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, many of them will uh, build your units and put them in their classrooms and better protect themselves, of course, and their kids. So thank you very much for this. Well, thank you for the service that you're, you're providing and getting the information out there and educating the educators and everyone around the, the school system. Thank you, Mark.